Welcome back, Agiteers. This is actually my second time recording this video because the first time manual focus was turned on and it looked like doggy doo doo. No offense, Meadow. But anyway, so here's the deal. Um, I came back, as you can see, looking in the background, I'm home. Uh, I've been home for about a week now, and I'm sorry I didn't make a video sooner, but I'm basically just trying to take care of number one and do what I can to stay healthy. So I have the Elvad. I don't know if you can see this bag here. Weighs about as much as a like a laptop bag with a laptop in it. Total weight seven pounds. Not too excited about having to carry it around, but then again, I feel really good. Uh, I can walk. I won't say long distances, but I walked out to the truck and I didn't have a problem breathing or anything, which I was really happy with. Um, I can sit in the chair and I don't have a problem breathing, which before I got this LVAD, I couldn't do that. Really quickly, for those who, <coughs> excuse me, for those who don't know, I have dilated cardiomyopathy non-compaction, which is a genetic thing. Uh, the left ventricle walls do not form correctly at birth and manifest itself a little later in life, in my case, 50 years. And the treatment was medicinal at first, but I now have the left ventricle assist device, also known as the LVAD and it's considered a terminal therapy meaning that my heart's had it it's shot ain't gonna work out if, if i'm gonna go forward from here i have to have a new heart uh, i would have to have a transplant so but in the meanwhile this device will keep me alive and actually makes me feel really good which is a major plus uh, i just feel so much more alert i don't know how to describe it but uh Inside my chest is an impeller that shoots the blood through my left ventricle, assisting my heart so that it doesn't have to work as hard. It's really quite cool. Um, let's do some show and tell. <coughs> okay, so this right here, see if you guys can get that in. This is the controller. Um, I would hook a battery up to it, but if you hook a battery up to it and it it automatically turns on and it'll start screeching because it doesn't detect the other battery and then it doesn't detect the drive line and one thing leads to another. But these two cables here are for the battery. Normally there would be another cable here that would go into my chest and it basically powers the unit that's inside my chest. This piece right here holds the battery in. So here's the battery, see those contacts? Line it up, put it in. I'm not gonna do it, otherwise we'll hear a screeching. We don't like that. Uh, pretty straightforward mechanism. Now I'm on electrical power when I sleep at night, and then when I get up in the morning, uh, I switch to the bag with battery backup and go from there. Oh, I wanted to mention also, the controller has a 15 minute emergency battery. So if the power goes out while I'm, while I'm sleeping, this will start screaming, which you could hear about, I don't know, a mile away. And there's no sleeping when that happens. Um, and so I would have to switch to batteries and then if the electricity doesn't come back on in relatively short fashion, I have to go someplace else that has electricity. So my sister's down the road, uh, Felicia's parents are across the road, so we have some options, but you can't just let all your batteries run down and hope for the best. You know, it could be a two or three day power outage, and if that happens and you let all your batteries run down, you're screwed. And this thing can never stop. Think of it that way. It has to keep going all the time. So, it was a pretty rough week after the surgery, and if I'm mentioning these things and I've already talked about them, 
it's because I'm still under an the effects of anesthesia and I can't remember very well what I talked about, so I apologize. But the first three or four days after the surgery was pretty rough. Um, it was very painful. They pretty much wanted me up from day one. <clears throat> so the whole concept is if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. But I have to say... If they'd just given you like three or four days, you know, I'm sitting up in the chair, maybe going to the bathroom, but it takes a little while for your body to come back, you know, it's still healing. It'll be months before I'm all healed up. Um, they get you out there though, man. They want you walking as soon as possible, as fast as you can go, as long as you can go. And they come back, they want you to go in the bathroom and use the bathroom and, you know, not use a urinal and do everything you can to get up on your feet. Um, they want you to sit in the chair. They don't want you to be in the bed. And the whole idea is you've got a battery pack, you're mobile, go do your thing, walk, whatever it is. And when you come back, um, when it's time to go to bed, you switch back to electrical power and the battery pack. Uh, you just leave as is. Now these batteries, each one of these batteries is good for about eight hours. So my pack has two of them in it and I'm good for about 16 to 17 hours. So pretty good run time. The trick is I have to leave the batteries uh, in until they get to the 15 minute discharge mark and then I can replace them. So if I look on my display here, let's see what I've got left. Okay, I'm down to the last dash. So I probably got a couple hours left, but I, we may start hearing it chirping and beeping, in which case I'll have to stop the video and come back because we got to replace the batteries. If you wait too long, there's a five minute mark and then this thing really, really starts screaming. And it's basically saying, yo, put the batteries in right now, <laughs> so you put the batteries in, replace them, you take the two uh, depleted batteries, you put them in the charger, and um, basically just keep this rotation going. Now this bag here that I have, this is my emergency kit. It has a backup controller, two batteries, and... Um, two connectors for the batteries so everything in here is my backup kit has to go everywhere I go every time without exception because imagine you're out somewhere and the controller failed and you're like oh yeah it's in my car no hurry just go out to the car and get the controller I'll just sit here and wait no you won't you could be dying so seconds are of essence. Uh, you've got to get that controller hooked up as soon as you can. One of the unfortunate things about the surgery was that uh, because it was rough and I apparently uh, they had to put me on the big bypass machine because my heart wouldn't restart and I was clinically dead for 15 minutes which shocked me. I thought the doctor was kidding. We talked about that before. Um, but unfortunately they couldn't do what's called an ablation so they take either um, uh, freezing cold CO2 or a chemical or heat and they go inside and they just ablate part of the heart well because of the complications of the surgery they weren't able to do that and you might be asking but why do you need that done well I need it done because unfortunately I can still have arrhythmias yep you can have the pump and feel good and still have arrhythmias crop, crop up. And the problem with that is if the arrhythmia goes on too long, it becomes VTAC. And VTAC's likely to get me shocked. I, I'm not going to say it's a guarantee, but they've done everything they can. They've upped one of my medicines to the highest dose, uh, Mexilatine. It's an antiarrhythmic and it also makes you unsteady on your feet so it's kind of like good and bad all at once i'll take it because i don't want to get shocked and i'll just concentrate more when i walk and that's what i've decided um 
Anyway, I'll have to go back at some point and get an ablation. And they told me the chance of the ablation working is about 40%. They said the heart's so resilient, it could trace a new path uh, to the two pieces of heart that are not beating correctly. Um, you know, they ablate it so that there's not a short circuit anymore. However, uh, there's a chance, a great chance, that it won't work. And from experience with my brother, um, the ablations he had weren't really successful. So we'll see. For those of you who don't know, my brother had an LVAD. And he passed away in 2012. The, um, he had complications with a brain bleed, and that was basically the beginning of the end. Um, but without the LVAD, he wouldn't have lived as long as he did. So it's one of the things I think about. I mean, if I was to die tomorrow, what would I think? Not much, I'd be dead. But no, seriously. Uh, I would say that I had great quality of life for those few days I had. And definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. So what else do I got to mention? Uh, so, yeah, there's a dressing that has to be changed every single day. And <clears throat> Felicia changes it, excuse me. <clears throat> Felicia has to change it every single day because I'm not allowed to change the dressing myself. Although, you can try to look in the mirror and get it right, but it's a very precise, sterile procedure with many steps one screw up and I could get a bad infection. If I get that infection, guess where I got to go? The hospital. If the infection travels up the line and gets into my heart, they have to crack me open again and put a whole new one in. And I don't think I would like to do that. So it's very precise. Um, while we're in this period, you have to have somebody with you for two months, 24 seven. You cannot be alone because not only would you want to hear the alarms, but you want somebody else to hear the alarms. Now, both Felicia and I are, are qualified through training to understand what the alarms mean and uh, what to do when we hear the alarms. Uh, Felicia actually went through all the training when I was still in the ICU, and I was just passed out. And I would wake up and I'd hear them talking, the trainer and Felicia, and then I'd just go, and I'd go back out. But, uh, She's actually more qualified than I am because she got like a double dose of the training. The other thing is, um, you know, dispensing medicine, you have to keep a log. Um, so Felicia keeps a log of all the medicine I'm taking. That's, that's why you need somebody with you. You can't just get up. You can't push with your hands for six to eight weeks. You have to rock the chair back and forth and kind of put your chin out and... and have somebody help you get up and that's the way it is because if you use your hands and you rip the stitches apart here in your chest that's it you're going back to the hospital they're going to crack you open you know they'll try to sew you back up but you're going to be in icu for another four or five days and you got to start the whole procedure over again and i don't want that so i'm trying to follow the rules and do what i've been told uh, let's see what else. They put me on an 1800 calorie a day diet. I would normally be lower, more like a thousand, but they told me not to do that and to get plenty of proteins and nutrients in with vegetables and things like that because I'm still healing. Um, at the same time, I drop about a pound a day and you might wonder, well, how is he losing weight? when he's eating 1800 calories a day. Well, I have, from the surgery, I gained about 12 pounds of water weight. So it's all very delicate. We have to slowly take the water off. If we go too fast, uh, key electrolytes will get depleted and I will get shocked. And that happened in the hospital. It's not very pleasant. Although I gotta tell you, it's better than the paddles. Woo. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, I lose about a pound a day. Um, I, when we came home, I was 271. And I think I'm down, what am I down to, Fifi? 
What am I down to? 265 points. 265 point something or other. So I've already lost six pounds. My dry weight appears to be about 260, 261. So once we get close to that, we're going to level off, probably reduce the amount of water pills that I have to take, also known as torsamide. Some of you may know it as Lasix, although torsamide is much more powerful than Lasix. Um, <clears throat> I take about 24 pills a day and to manage all that and know when to take it, why to take it, what it's doing to me is hugely difficult and I couldn't do it without Felicia. I'd basically be screwed. Um, if it wasn't for her, I'd have to have somebody else here and they'd have to live here 24 seven, which, you know, nobody can really do. So, so anyway, the dressing has to be changed. It's a sterile procedure. They change, she changes the dressing. Um, usually we have breakfast after that. The day starts in earnest and, you know, like she's doing some sewing and other things and I'm shooting a video and I'll get it up as soon as I can once I'm done. But I do want to get tech videos out. I will get tech videos out. I just need to recuperate some. That's why I'm doing this video so you know I'm still... Still kicking, still here. Um, with the LVAD, you have a 90% success rate. So that's a very good rate. Um, but that doesn't mean just the surgery. It means on a daily basis. The first six months are touch and go. If something's going to go wrong, it usually goes wrong in the first six months. So <clears throat> if I get out of the six month window, it's not that something can't happen. Um, it's just, you know, I'll be outside that range, the danger zone, and it's less likely to happen. So if you would like to ask me questions, drop it in the comments. I'll keep an eye on the comments and I'll try to answer them as they come in and explain you know any questions you might have about this um, consider you know most of my viewers have computers and cameras and cell phones and other things you know what it's like this is this controller is nothing more than another computer um, with some very loud alarms and very uh, bright lights to get your attention it's really what it's all about is to get your attention and you you have to it's interesting because if you heard something screeching at like 115 decibels you know you have to just calmly get up and say I have an alarm let's see what it is and the Fifi comes and helps me and we look at it you know and it's like why is this doing this we have to remain calm even though this alarm is screeching it's not the easiest thing to do, I'll tell you that much. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. Mondays are maintenance Mondays. So, bringing the battery back. If you look on this battery, you see those gold contacts. When you uh, slip this into its sleeve to hold it, it also has gold contacts. On maintenance Monday, you clean all of your equipment. So, you get hooked up to electrical. You got to take all your equipment with alcohol and non-fibrous cloth or material and you have to clean off every one of the contacts and do the same thing for the battery holders and check all drive lines make sure there's no breaks in them no breaks in the power lines for the batteries you can do this for all the equipment because you don't want to be in a situation where you take a battery out because this thing starts screaming and says you know hey one battery is down and you go and push the next battery in and it doesn't make any difference so you know you got a big problem and the problem could be as much as a moat of dust so you got to clean it keep it put away um, keep it secure and your life depends on it you have to do it so I was really intimidated by the LVAD um, before I got it, but I'm less so, especially with the training. I felt really good about it, and it helps to know that somebody else knows and understands it. 
So Felicia's pretty knowledgeable about it, and I feel like if I couldn't understand it, she would. So you got two pairs of eyes looking at something in case something goes wrong. Um, otherwise, I'm doing quite good. Uh, I walked five minutes yesterday. Sounds trivial, I know. But I felt really good when I did it. And I'm going to try and increase that, you know, day after day. They want me to get up to about 30 minutes without having to take a rest, which would be about typical for me. I, you know, 30 minutes would get me and the dogs around the neighborhood and back home again. Hi, JD. So if I can get up to 30 minutes, I'm going to be really happy. Very, very, very happy. Um, although I'd like to do eventually like an hour. Um, I have a Elvad, I guess you would call him Coach. He is, he He's had his Elvad for two years. And each of the phases that I went through, he was coaching me on, hey, you can expect this. You might experience this. It might be, you know, so on and so forth. And um, his information has been invaluable for me. Sorry about the cat. She don't care. She wants food. She's got food. Um, anyway, he told me that he could do things that he wasn't able to do before. And he helped move something like 14 yards of mulch with him and his neighbor. And the Elvad is what makes that possible. So I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's definitely going to be a different life for me. Uh, my friend Brian said, you know, go for quality and my doctor did as well he said go for quality not necessarily quantity what do you want and I might get the best of both worlds we'll know more you know in the near future whether or not you know this is gonna last me and hopefully I can get that last 10 pounds off and get on the heart transplant list and be eligible for a heart that's my goal Okay, that's all I've got for now. Uh, I want to say a big shout out and thank you to my family, friends, and uh, the YouTubers that view my videos and make comments. It, uh, I don't know how if I would have got through it as easily. I, I won't say it's easy. It was hard, but I don't think I would have got through it without your comments and, and well wishes and prayers. I really appreciate that. Uh, so thank you for that and thank you for continuing to do that i really appreciate it and i will try to do an update sooner than one week but i'm kind of i'm waiting for something to change before i do a video you know i want something to, uh, like a positive change that i can report to you so i don't just want to do a video just well maybe i will i don't know uh, anyway i try to wait until there's something to report um that's why. And of course, I've been sleeping. Speaking of sleeping, I can only sleep on my back. I hate sleeping on my back and I'm in a chair. It's miserable. I really don't like it at all. Um, hopefully someday soon I'll be able to sleep on my sides again, but right now it causes too much pain, so it's not possible. But uh, So I get cat naps. Two hours here, two hours there, one hour here, a couple hours there. It's, it's kind of tricky. All right, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.